By the late 1960s, full of post-war optimism, people believed that the world's battle with infectious diseases was over. The U.S. Surgeon General even urged the world to move forward. But a new war was just beginning. At this time, science and technology had ushered the world into a global age, connecting people in radically new ways. This opened a seeming Pandora's box of new viruses like HIV, SARS, and deadly hemorrhagic fevers like Ebola and Lassa fever. But are these viruses really new? Or just new to our detection? To examine this question, let's take Ebola and Lassa fever for example, two of the deadliest diseases known to man. So how common are these bugs, really? The movies show outbreaks in remote regions of Africa, killing everyone in its path before disappearing back into the depths of the rainforest. But when we use scientific tools to look at how these viruses spread, we see something very different. The body produces antibodies, or attack drones, that help fight off infection. These antibodies stay in the body for years and can be measured in people's blood. The fancy name for this is seroprevalence, and it gives scientists a clue to how many people come in contact with the disease. Seroprevalence shows that loss and Ebola can be found in many parts of Africa, and in some areas, as high as 20% of people have come in contact with the disease. For Lhasa, that's about 100 to 300,000 people each year. Viruses related to Ebola and Lhasa have also been discovered throughout the world. These infections are common because animal reservoirs are common, and as globalization continues, more and more people will encounter them in their homes and on their plates. So why aren't we in the midst of a great plague, an outbreak, a contagion? Is it possible that some human populations have evolved to develop resistance to these diseases? If these viruses were old and common in human populations, then one would expect evolution to take its course. Survival of the fittest. Turns out, we can calculate that. By looking at the rate of mutations in a virus, one can figure out when a virus was born. That puts Lassa virus at about 1,000 years old, and Ebola at a ripe 10,000 years old. So evidence shows that for some of these newly found diseases, they are, in fact, very old and more common than Hollywood portrays. So how does this change our strategy to combat these diseases? Scientists don't have to and shouldn't wait for an outbreak to study a disease like Ebola anymore. Instead, they can work with clinics around the world to monitor a steady flow of diseases that might otherwise go undetected. This paradigm shift allows scientists to pick up other diseases that are unknown to modern science, help care for patients that are sick, and help head off the next pandemic. Clearly the war on infectious diseases continues, but the human race has been fighting diseases silently within the genomes of their very own cells for hundreds of thousands of years. And it is our genomes and the genomes of these microbes that provide the key to understanding and fighting these deadly diseases for the future.